Good evening. At least 16 holidaymakers were hurt tonight in an accident on what's claimed to be the highest roller coaster ride in the world at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. One train of carriages ran into the back of another, and some people were trapped in their seats when safety mechanisms jammed. Firemen helped them down to safety. Our North of England reporter, Harold Jones, has the story. Trapped and terrified, holidaymakers stranded on the big one minutes after it ran into big trouble. One coach slammed into others, locking the ride's brakes, trapping the passengers in their seats, held there by safety bars. Most suffered cuts, bruises and shock. Firemen cut them free, helping them down ladders to the ground 30 feet below. Blackpool's big one was designed partly on computer. Tonight, computer failure was being mooted as one possible cause of the crash. Its construction created a new landmark on the Blackpool skyline, rivaling the tower. It's been a £13 million gamble to bring some glamour back to a seaside resort which has seen better days. Its selling point, sheer excitement from the world's tallest, fastest roller coaster. The coaches can reach speeds of up to 85 miles per hour on the ride's fastest stretches. The computerized braking system has proved unreliable since the ride opened in May. It's understood it broke down once earlier today before the crash. Health and safety executive inspectors have closed the ride for scrutiny and it'll stay closed until their happy holiday makers can safely be allowed back on the big one. People have been injured in a crash on the world's largest roller coaster in Blackpool. It happened early this evening when two trains on the ride collided. One split and ran into the back of another. People are in hospital suffering from whiplash injuries and shock. Paul Crone reports from the scene. Emergency services attend to the injured as carriages on the world's tallest roller coaster lie stricken. It was an accident which technically should not have been possible. One train waiting to get into the station hit from behind by another which should have been halted by an earlier braking system. Around 30 people were stranded aboard the train, many trapped when the security bars locked and wouldn't reopen. This is the second incident involving the 12 million pound roller coaster. On the day the ride officially opened to the general public on May the 28th, 30 people were stranded 235 feet up. The American company which helped put the ride together is said to be shocked by the accident and two experts are flying to Britain tonight. Back in May, the company said this about the ride. There's so many safety devices on these rides that it's, it's impossible for it to come off or in fact for you to come out from the car. If other means of public transportation had our record, I think they'd be very proud people. Could it have possibly been avoided if there weren't as many trains on the track at once? There weren't many trains on the track. You know, the, the system is designed to run three trains. We were running two today. The health and safety executive has been informed about the accident and the ride is now closed until further notice. MPs. wonderful fun we can have even though the weather is not exactly great at the moment but uh hell is there this morning martin what's the latest on the condition of those injured in the roller coaster accident yesterday Good morning, Joe. Yes, the big one crashed yesterday. Uh, the latest we have from Blackpool Police is that 32 holidaymaker passengers were taken, uh, rescued from the big one, the Big Dub Dipper, the world's tallest and fastest. It goes at 85 miles an hour at points. Uh, 32 rescued, four still detained overnight in hospital. Well, I mean, this was meant to be the big attraction, you know, that was going to bring uh, tourists back to Blackpool. It must have really hit tourism now. It's not a good year for Blackpool. Uh, behind me, of course, is the tower, which celebrates its 100th year uh, this year in a couple of weeks time the Queen and Prince Philip in fact Prince Philip was going to visit um, the big one in, in two weeks time when they're here it's not good news at all uh, we understand that the big one is going to be closed for at least another week or so um, there are safety checks going to be carried out today members of the health and safety executive are on their way to Blackpool as we speak to find out what went wrong it looks as if it was probably computer error this is an American designed um, fairground ride cost 12 million pounds as you can perhaps see now this uh, this was the rescue carried out yesterday. Firemen had to use the Pleasure Beach's own Simon Snorkel aerial platforms to actually get the passengers down. And the managing director of the beach was saying that people were not so much trapped inside those steel cages on the cars. 
he said they were actually kept in there and that's what the cages are designed to do to stop people falling out because at some points as I say 85 miles an hour it's four times um, the gravity pull at one point you actually become weightless because of the speed and the way that you're actually being thrown around uh, 30 miles of steel used to construct that ride as I say there's going to be a safety check uh, carried out over the next few days and uh, the big one will be closed for uh, some time to come Right, well, I mean, we've heard that it was meant to be this high-tech ride, that it was supposed to be foolproof. What kind of precise investigations will be going on? Basically, we want, it's all run by computers. It was designed by computers, it's run by computers. What happened yesterday was that uh, at the end of the ride, uh, the cars were doing about six to eight miles an hour or so. One car, for some reason, its brakes went on just before it came into the station where you get off. They didn't know why it did that. Um, the other one was coming down behind it, and for some reason, it came through a red light. They don't know why, and it slowly, I suppose you'd call it a shunt, basically it shunted the, uh, the carriages in front, um, causing whiplash uh, to most of those who were injured um, and some cuts and bruises. They're obviously going to find out what exactly went on. The uh, experts from Utah in America who designed this ride are flying over, I believe, today or tomorrow to actually help and find out um, exactly what the cause of this was. Of course, it's been plagued with problems on its first day, and it's an inaugural day, only two hours after it was opened. Um, one of the cars stuck at the height of the, uh, the ride, which is 235 feet, and passengers had to be led down to safety. So it's not been a good start. Okay, thanks very much indeed, Martin. And we'll be returning to Blackpool in about 20 minutes' time when Martin will be finding out why the Blackpool landladies are up in arms over the way they've been portrayed on Coronation Street this week. Absolutely. Any of you who are watching that will know exactly. The aftermath of the accident on the world's tallest and fastest roller coaster ride. We should be showing exclusive footage proving that the ride broke down just hours before last night's accident, which left 30 people injured. Investigations have already begun into how that crash happened. In a moment, we'll be joining Andy Gill live from the scene, but first, Paul Crone takes a look at today's developments and the reaction from holidaymakers. Just two and a half hours before the accident, an amateur cameraman films the world's tallest roller coaster at a standstill. Blackpool Pleasure Beach staff can be seen trying to find out what the problem is. Passengers are stranded almost 200 feet up. Well, I was just waiting to go on the ride, and when we saw it stuck up there, uh, I knew there was something wrong, you know, it stuck up there for quite a considerable time. And then later on we saw the mechanics or electricians uh, running around opening boxes and everything like that. At ten past six, the Pleasure Beach's 12 million pound dream turned into a nightmare. 30 people were injured when one train crashed into another. The emergency services helped the stranded passengers to safety, the injured taken to hospital. Most of these patients had whiplash type of uh, acceleration, deceleration injury. Um, some people have been unfortunate enough to uh, sustain a direct impact of the face with uh, probably one of the restraining bars. And the public's reaction today? Well, it's a shame really because we've come all the way from London and like, we're especially to ride on it and like, we've turned up today and not getting a chance to ride on it. So, well, I suppose it's one of those things. It does frighten you a bit like the thought of an accident, but like, if it was proved to be safer, we'd go on it. Definitely. I think the worrying thing for me was the fact that had he been further up and there'd been a collision there, he could have been very, you know, very dangerous. The accident was caused by a computer failure as one train waiting to go into the roller coaster station was hit from behind by another. Film taken recently shows that the train should have stopped at this braking station. The harsh truth is that the roller coaster as yet hasn't lived up to its expectations. On several occasions the ride has been closed down due to high winds and that should really only be the case under the most extreme weather conditions. On the day the ride first opened to the public back in May, 30 people were stranded 235 feet up. People have come specifically to Blackpool to ride the big one, only to be disappointed when they get here. It's hoped the arrival of two experts from the United States will solve the problem. Until then, visitors will have to be content using the Pleasure Beach's other rides. Well, we now go live to Blackpool where our reporter Andy Gill is joined by Geoffrey Thompson, who's the managing director of the resort's Pleasure Beach. Thank you, Lucy. Mr. Thompson, let me ask you first of all, the ride, as we've heard, had broken down a couple of hours before last night's accident. Should it, in fact, have been reopened? Uh, as we spoke earlier, it didn't break down. The computer shut the ride down because they thought there might have been a fault. It turned out there was no fault. And when the whole computerized system was cleared, it reopened. 
nevertheless, the fact that the computer had shut it down two hours before the accident suggests that there was something wrong. It doesn't suggest, as you know, you do now understand computers, and you're perfectly well. It doesn't